Welcome to Behold the Land Presents. I'm Chris Shelton, your host, and I'm very glad that you have chosen to spend a portion of your day with us. Thanksgiving is soon to be celebrated in our country. It's just around the corner. And for the most part, you know, outside of spending days off of work, eating and, and celebrating with our friends and family, is it possible that much of its original meaning has been overlooked? In today's society, so much of what we see and hear and experience is all about me, mine, I. It's all about self and how self can look better, be more popular, achieve more, and on and on the story goes. But what about, just what about that age-old adage of esteeming others higher than ourselves? Have we missed the boat somehow in the raising of our children to be selfless? rather than selfish? Perhaps this is because of a problem in our society that too many adults are also stricken with the same selfish tendencies and they may not even be aware of just how serious this problem really is. You know, Pastor Kenny, he's entitled his message today, Thankful for What? Thankful for what? And perhaps, just perhaps, as we listen today, the Holy Spirit may speak to our own hearts and perform just a bit of needed spiritual surgery in our own lives. But as always, before we begin today's message, we are blessed to go to 3ABN's Worship Center and listen to a song entitled, How Wonderful Heaven Will Be, as sung by Steve Darmody. As I see the marks of sin, I feel a sadness. But there's a thought that always brings a sweet release. Soon our Savior will be here. That day is drawing near. When tears, trials, and heartaches all will cease. Oh, how wonderful heaven will be to be with Jesus throughout eternity. No earthly thing can compare to what is waiting for Just think of all the countless joys of heaven. A better land, a better life than we could know. We will be forever safe through His forgiving grace. This gift is ours because he loves us so. 
Thank you for joining us today. We're glad that you can spend some time here with us as we open the Word of God once again. And we just pray that it will be a blessing to you and blessing to those that may be neighbors and friends. But before we study the Word, we're going to be talking about a very interesting subject since we're in this season. We're going to talk about thankful for what? Thankful for what? Do we have anything to be thankful for? If it is, what, what, what are we telling our neighbors and friends? Or are we talking to God about it? Let's just go to God in prayer, shall we, and ask His blessing upon this message that it can somehow reach out and touch those who need a special touch today. And, of course, that's all of us. Let's pray about it, shall we, as we kneel together. Merciful Father in heaven, we commit ourselves into Thy care and Thy keeping. Pray that You would send Your sweet Holy Spirit. Forgive us of our sins, anything that would block heaven from being able to communicate with us. We pray that it will be laid at the foot of the cross. Thank you for your blood that flowed from Calvary. Touch every heart, every soul, every life, every individual. Open our ears that we may hear you speaking to us. And I give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, our subject is thankful for what? You know, this is an awesome time uh, of the year, as far as I'm concerned, you know, weather and everything else, but Thanksgiving time. To me, it's a, just an awesome time of the season. It's a, it's, it's a time to thank God. It's a time to get together with family and friends and, you know, have a, uh, share a meal together, uh, be able to talk, maybe haven't seen people in a while, and be able to just sit down and just have some good family time together. But I wonder, is that all that there is to Thanksgiving Day? The world celebrates Thanksgiving. And what does it really center around? Does it center around God? Or does it center around us? And is there a time that, that we can thank God in a very special way? I've heard some people say, well, you know, we just need to be careful about designating a special day to serve God. You know, we can serve God and we can praise Him every day of the week. We should be doing that in our hearts and in our minds. But how nice that we can set aside a specific day for those who maybe have forgotten God and they will be reminded that it's called Thanksgiving Day. What do you have to be thankful for? Stop just a second and think. What do you really have to be thankful for? Is, if I ask you, do you have something to be thankful for? You might drop a list from here to the floor. And it's interesting. Others, you ask, do you have anything to be thankful for? And 
all of a sudden they go, they go blank. It's like there's, there's nothing going on in their life. There's no, nothing to be thankful for. May I just say this today? Every individual has something to be thankful for. Whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whatever you have or you don't have in this life, you have a lot to be grateful for. We serve a great God. It's the uh, first proclamation, by the way, that was given at Plymouth uh, about three years after they landed there, and this was by the governor Bradford. And I want you to take special notice how our forefathers, those who landed in this country, how they viewed our freedom of religion, how they viewed our thankfulness to God for everything that came their way. They thanked Him for crops. They thanked Him for the blessings of protection. This country was founded upon freedom. And as we see this founded upon freedom and how God blesses us, the sad part of it is today that it seems like mankind's trying to do everything possible to get God out of our country, to take Him out. But you, the blessings that God gives to this country is conditional upon us receiving Him and asking Him, relying upon Him, praying to Him, praising Him. If we're not doing that, the blessings will not come. Oh yeah, He gives us the time. But just notice with me what was written in a paragraph or so as I read it to you about our forefathers and how they were grateful and thankful and how they thought, well, with all the blessings I've got this year, we need to take special time to praise Him. Governor Bradford of Massachusetts, he made a Thanksgiving proclamation about three years after they settled at Plymouth. Here's what he said. In so much as the great Father, talking about the Father in heaven, has given us this year an abundant harvest. Just jot down those little things that he was giving praise for. Abundant harvest. In so much as he has protected us from the ravages of the savages, has spared us from the pestilence and disease, and has granted us freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our conscience. And then he signed into effect November the 29th, on, on Thursday in 1623. He said that we're, we should all gather together and give praise to God, render thanksgiving to the Almighty God for the blessings. Oh, that sounds so nice. It sounds good, doesn't it? Is that what we do today when we gather together for thanksgiving? Is that what we're really doing? This is what they did in the beginning. They, were, they had a lot to be grateful and thankful for, for where they had come from. A little bit later, George Washington, we're looking at some great men that God used and their thoughts. And they penned these words. George Washington said this, We're in as it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of God Almighty. How bold he was. He said, it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of the Almighty God and to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits and humbly to implore His protection and His favor. And then he recommended to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer. We need that in this world. We need that time. It's more than just all selfish and all we're doing. And let, let me just say this. Now, some of you will get a little excited about it, but that's just the way it goes. Some of us think Thanksgiving Day is a day of parades and football games. It was not mentioned here. It had to do with our giving thanks to God for all of the blessings that He bestows upon us. And not only did they say thanksgiving, but he said he set it aside for a day that we can pray. How long has it been since you, since maybe all of us, have really taken this day into consideration? President Lincoln, oh, a man quoted from quite regularly, in 1863 made this uh, comment. In fact, he, he passed what he called a law. Here's what he said. He said, I'm going to proclaim the fourth Thursday of November 
to be the official national Thanksgiving Day. Do you know how long that it took to ratify this? In 1941, we're talking, Abraham Lincoln said this in 1863, finally in 1941, the U.S. Congress finally ratified that. That took almost 80 years for Congress to act. I wonder why so slow, maybe, when all had to do with praising God for the blessings that He gives. Everyone has something to be grateful and thankful for. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, verse 7, There is that maketh himself rich. Notice the wording. There is that maketh himself rich, listen, yet hath nothing. And there is that maketh himself poor, but yet he hath great riches. How can this be? And one person seems to be rich, and yet they have nothing. The other person over here has nothing, but yet he's rich. Could it be the way that he's, he's thinking, the way he's making decisions? Kind of reminds me of a, of, of a story about an older gentleman. This older gentleman, he was, he was seen going down the street one day. His, his clothes were, were cleaned and they were pressed, but they, they had a lot of patches in them. Well worn, but this man seemed to be very happy. He had this, 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 this smile. I, I like to call it a winsome smile. When, you, when he smiled, you just, it caught your attention. It would draw you to him. He would smile. People would say, oh boy, this man seems to be really happy. He was walking along like he, like he owned the world. As he walked along down the street, it was though, even though dressed like he was, he, was, it's, he owned the world, but he really didn't own the world and owned very little of it. A friend later confided in, about this man. He said, he carried with him as he walked along a little small bag that had less than $2 in it. That was all that he had. He had no bank account. He had no savings account. In fact, the man had no home. The man had no money, they say, in the bank. He had, he had nothing which to draw upon. He had no land. He had no family. And yet he walked along with a great smile on his face as though he owned the world. It's very interesting where this man was headed. Smile on his face, walking as though he owned the world. He seemed like he had nothing less than $2. And where he was going for the day was a friend was in terrible need of a dollar. He was going to give that dollar. Well, he just he had less than two dollars to his name. But he was happy as he's going. There, there was no selfishness that was found in this, this man. Nothing but there's something kind of happiness that lived inside of him. He seemed to have a, a faith that n nothing could shake him. Regardless of what happened, the smile was there. Continued to go on down the road. And whatever hit him, he just smiled and he, he went on. In fact, he, he really believed this. He really believed that God was his father. He really believed that his father owned the cattle, you see, on the hillside. That his father had thousands of ways to meet his needs. He couldn't even figure out all the ways that God had to meet his needs. Too numerous. But he walked around with that happiness and that assurance that though he didn't have anything in his pocket and didn't own anything, just the clothes on his back, that there was something special. He knew his father. He seemed to not have any worries. You know how you get when you don't have your house payment. You know how you get when the electric bill is due. You know how you start acting up even as a Christian when things get tight. And you say, I've only got a few dollars in the bank. At least you had a few dollars in the bank. Oh, you probably got some. I've heard people say, so, well, I don't have any money. But they've got some money in the savings. Somebody's lying somewhere. Don't say you have nothing if you have something. But this man had nothing. 
He believed in the Bible truth that God would never leave him or forsake him for he had supplied all of his life. Maybe not like you expect him to do for you, but he had met this man's needs. Do you remember how we read in that passage there? There is that maketh himself rich, and yet he hath nothing. And then you have the one that maketh himself poor, yet he has, he has everything. Does this man fit? He really believed that God loved him. He had a peace that was within that would show on the outside. See, during this time, we need to have that peace that's inside of us, but not just stays inside of us, that it shows to others who are grasping and reaching. We need always to give a word of encouragement. If they don't have, God's able to supply. If they're down to the last dime, God has a lot of dimes. Don't know how the bill's going to get paid. God can pay the bills. You've seen it. He's done it. Why doubt Him now? And so... He didn't have any money, but this man was rich. You'd think he had nothing to praise God about, but he had a lot to praise God about, and he continued to praise God. He had many stories in which he could relate how God had blessed him every day of his life. Every day for him who had nothing, but had everything. How do you feel about it today? Is your happiness based on what you, what you have? Or should every day be a day of thanksgiving and, and praise? For Heavenly Father has met our needs over and over and over. And yet, when it gets a little tight, we begin to get a little frightened. We're afraid that he, we may not meet that need. Oh, God is able. Exercise faith. Watch what God does. Trust Him! If he sees fit for everything to go, so be it. Everything that you have. Listen, you, some of the people who got, you have a lot. Before Jesus comes, you know, you're not going to have anything. But you're going to have to have a faith that trusts him. If he so desires for these things of the world to be taken from us, that we may be made right with him, turn them over to him. That's why I encourage you, put everything you have on the altar right now. Let God be in charge. I love the old songs. I don't know about you, but I, I love some old songs. And one of my favorites, and I'm sure it's probably yours too, says, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God hath done. What a message in this song. But we're encouraged to do what? Count your blessings. Don't just be counting, I don't have any money in the bank, I'm not being blessed here, I've got this problem, I've got that problem. Always looking on the negative. Even the song says, which is a principle of Scripture, is count your many blessings and see what God hath done. Do you know how that would change your attitude for the day? If we just had a more positive attitude based not upon the world, but upon God. How different we would act and react. Why? Because if there's a need that's not made, not met for that day, <clears throat> God is able. Isn't He? Sure, He's done it for you many times. He's done it for me many times. But I do find this. Some people have a very difficult time praising God. I'm not sure why. Very difficult time counting their blessing. You can, you can challenge someone, even as a professed Christian, well, tell us, give us some blessings. Tell us how, what God has, has done for you. Some will boldly say, well, you know, I, I don't, I, don't know if I've, I can't think of any blessings right now. Others might be able to think of a few blessings, but they just can't seem to get them out of their mouth. They want to maybe keep them inside. If you keep them inside, I'll tell you, you're not going to be getting those blessings. They've got to come out. We serve a God that does what? Good. Inhabits our praises, so we need to be praising Him. Many think they have nothing to praise Him about. Uh, in fact, when you go to church and you have praise time, what happens many times? You can't hardly get anybody to lift their voice to praise God. You say, well, give us a report, brothers and sisters, what God has done for you. And it looks like you're, just, you're, 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 you're talking to the trees. 
Oh, I can't think of anything right now. I know he's done something. I, I know he has, but boy, I, I don't know. But there, thank God there's always a few that always have a lot to praise God for. Why are there some in the church that they always have something to praise God for, and the majority, 90, 95%, they just can't think of a thing? What are these two or three or four, whatever they're doing, what is it that, that they've got going on in their life that makes them want to praise God, give Him thanks and honor and glory, and the other post is saying, boy, I, tell you, I just don't know. What could it possibly be? See, we need to get to the bottom of it. It's very, very important that we do. Kind of reminds me of the, uh, there's an old, during the gold rush days, there was a, a, a man who was going out, you know, we call him prospector, always going out and they're prospecting, they're looking for gold and digging for gold and so on and so forth. But, you know, every few weeks, he, he, listen, he consistently, now, think spiritual. Don't they, oh, this is story time. This is, this is spiritual. Every few weeks, he'd go out and he'd spend several weeks out in the mountains. And, oh, oh boy, he just, he kept doing his, what he called prospecting. He was looking for gold in the hills. And every time he came back, he had a bigger find of gold, more of it, and people begin to wonder, why is it this man who went out, every time he went out, all of a sudden he was finding gold, and it was, it was bigger than before and better than before, and he was always thankful. Well, naturally, the other people who were prospectors around there couldn't figure out exactly why, why, why does he have so much to be thankful for? Why is he getting all these blessings? We go out, we find nothing. We can't see nothing. It seemed like we had nothing to talk about, nothing to be thankful for. Why is it this man? And ever so often they'd venture out and, and try their hand at, at, at discovering some kind of a vein of gold. And most of the time they'd come back and, oh, it just didn't happen. They wanted to know this man's secret. You know, in the Christian life, we need to listen around and we need to watch and we need to look and, and hear what's going on. Why are these people, why do people have a lot to be thankful for? And what is it they're praising him about? Why are they getting all these blessings, it seems like? And some people say, well, they're all the blessings. We're not getting them. Oh, I tell you, these prospectors were the same way. And they looked at this little old man. And every time he came back in and said, Whoa, I've hit a big vein. It was better than before. More gold. Praise God, it's working out good. They said, we want to know your secret. We want to know why it is that you are getting blessed. You're thankful and you're always praising and so on. But you're always hitting jackpot. We're not. And they just kept needling this poor little man. Just kept needling him all the time. We want to know what the secret is. In our Christian experience, it's the same today. You know what the little man said? As he was surrounded by a group of prospectors, he simply said, that, please tell us what it is. Here's what he said. He said, listen. Mm. He said, I just keep digging holes. Well, that may not have meant too much to you, but I want you to think in a spiritual sense here. He was keeping after it. He was going out working. He was doing something. He said, I just keep digging holes. The others weren't going out. They were too concerned about why everybody else was getting blessed. They weren't doing anything. Here was the man going out, and he just kept digging holes. And when the more holes he dug, the more opportunities he had to find gold. Opportunities that God gives you to, to, to bless you, bless you. As Christians, I say on this Thanksgiving season, just keep digging holes. Don't give up. Just keep digging holes and the blessings will come. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 7, it says, Seek. <laughs> You've got it. Seek and ye shall find. Good knock and it shall be open. But the Bible says this. Prospector had it. Just keep digging. Jesus says, you must seek, and ye shall find. Of course, in Matthew 6, it begins to be a little clearer. Jesus said, here's what needs to happen first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Seek ye first. Keep on digging holes, as it were. Keep on seeking the Lord. And then Proverbs really just nails it down as far as I'm concerned. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 4, the Bible says, If thou seekest for her as silver, 
and searches for her as hidden treasure. Talking about finding Jesus, finding the Word of God, lighting it up in, in your life. That we need to search out God. We need to be searching in His Word as for what? Hidden treasures. We're going to have to dig. We're going to have to dig deep down in the well of truth. And God's going to bless you and you'll have a lot to be grateful and thankful for. If you haven't found Jesus, may I just give you a little bit of advice. If you haven't found Him yet, I'm going to just encourage you to keep right on digging. Because if you dig in faith, you will find Him. You know, in order to be thankful, what we've been talking about, in order to be thankful, we must have a thankful disposition. What does that really mean? A thankful disposition, you know what, it's easier, it's easier for some people to say thank you than it is for others. You, know, you, you just take men and women, they're a little bit differently cut, aren't they? And, and a lot of times it's much easier for a woman to say, I'm sorry, than it is for a man to say, I'm sorry. Sometimes it's easier for a woman to say, oh, th praise God for this and that, than a man to say, praise God. There shouldn't be, but there, there is. And I'm, just, I'm thinking today about a, a thankful disposition. You'll say, well, I'm not really sure. That means an inclination to be thankful. Do you have an inclination to be thankful? Do you have a, a tendency to be thankful? See, there's a lot of people, that, 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 what I have in this life, I have worked for. I did this myself. Listen, you're in trouble, brother. You're in big trouble. You've done nothing on your own. The Bible is clear. It says it's in Him that we live and that we move and that we have our, our being. You, you, the air belongs to Him that you're breathing. What you earn, what you have in the bank, it belongs to Him. He's loaned it to you to see how you're going to act. And many people are acting pretty selfish. This is a time to praise Him, to give thanks for all that He's done. Now, let's ask that question again. Do you have a thankful disposition? Well, you're still thinking about it. Maybe you don't have an answer, but if you don't, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about here, here's how to acquire one. Remember, we must have this this uh, disposition, a thankful disposition, simply means that we're, our attitude, that means our inclinations, our tendencies are to say, thank you, Lord, to give somebody thanks. We find it difficult to thank somebody when they do something for us. Here's how you can acquire one, by the way. If we understand more fully, if we understand more fully the great work that Jesus of Jesus and giving His life at Calvary, the sacrifice that was made, the salvation of this world. If we contemplate those issues, all of a sudden it does a little something to, to our hearts and to our minds and to our, our thinking if we're meditating upon Jesus and His life. If not, we become very selfish and self-centered and unthankful. Notice what the Bible says in 1 John 3, 1. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Well, I think somebody should have shouted. I don't know that I hear you right now, but somebody should be standing and shouting right now. Behold what manner of what? Here's that word. Love the Father hath bestowed upon us. What manner of love... That he's, he's bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons and what? And the daughters of God. We have no right to be sons and daughters of God. We're sinful. We've fallen short. And yet he forgives us and brings us back into the family. And he calls you daughter. He calls you son. That's why the apostle says, Whoo, we, what manner of love. It's like it's over his head. What, whoa, it's, it's out of this world. That's the kind of love that he has for us. Regardless of our pathetic lives, pathetic mistakes, sin, whatever it might be, as we come to Him and confess our sin, sins, and we lay them out before Him, Father, forgive me. 
what manner of love He bestows upon me as He treats me as though I've never sinned. As He invites me to be part of the family of God. He calls me a son. He calls you a daughter. See, here's the key. The key is simply when we see Jesus. When we see His great love that He has for us and His mercy and His goodness and with most of us, what? His long-suffering. Long-suffering with you as an individual. Long-suffering with me. Long-suffering with the world. Look how long that He's... Can I just use the word put up? Put up with me. Maybe put up with you. Put up with the world of all the nasty, bad things that are happening in the world. How God must view it and how He wants to put an end to it. How it must hurt Him. As we see Jesus, as sinners, we find that we, we have no hope without Him. And yet it's by His life, it's by His sacrifice, it's everything that He's done that He offers us, what? Eternal life. And He says to me, He says to you today, you can be sons and daughters of God. What manner of love He's bestowed upon us. Should we not take a day, every day of our life, to be grateful and thankful? A day of thanksgiving, a day of prayer. I mentioned before, not just a day of family gathering and feeding our face, eating way too much. So when you get done eating, the first thing you always say, Woo, I ate too much. Where's the recliner? Get back on recliner. What, halfway pass out? Turn the football game on. This is not what, we're, this is not what the Bible talks about being th- thanksgiving. The principles of thanksgiving. Our forefathers understood it. Many times they went into detail. They thanked Him, listen, for the corn and for the potatoes and for the green beans. Are you still with me? They identified everything that came up out of the ground because He had power in the earth for those things to grow. They belonged to Him and He gave them willingly. Do we, do we really do Are we missing something here? What an opportunity, a time for us. But our key to is if you don't have a thankful disposition, we need to behold Jesus and His sacrifice. And as we behold Him, we become thankful and our disposition change. And it's easier for us to say, well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, neighbors. Thank you, friends. Thank you for all that's been done. And then with that thankfulness, what do we do? We begin to follow Jesus wherever He leads us. See, this is exciting. Not just say, thank you, Lord, and and then we depend some prayer, but we're willing to start following Him all the way. Why? Because His Spirit is drawing us to Him. Have you felt that Spirit drawing you lately? Oh, friend, don't forsake it. You remember James? You've been reading James uh, 4, verse 8. It says, if we draw nigh to God, He will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to what? To God Because God's drawing you, and He's going to draw nigh to you. I believe this. You take a step. You take one step toward Him, He'll take two towards you. And some of you have not been thankful enough. You're afraid maybe to take that step today. Don't be afraid. It'll be the greatest thing that you've ever done. You need not worry about it because you're in the hands of a, a capable God that loves you more than any earthly individual could. He wants you to spend eternity with Him. He's doing everything possible to save you, but you've got to take a step toward Him today. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. He doesn't intrude on you. He doesn't threaten you. He just says, Look, I'm knocking. Will you please open the door and I'll come in and I'll sup with you. And I have to say, Oh, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. What an awesome thing that is. Now, what is it? You, you have anything to be thankful for today? Oh, my, oh I'm, 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 going, I'm going to have to help you then. Because you're still, some of you are stuttering, saying, well, I'm not sure if I have. The simplicity, everyday life. That's why no one should sit through a service and have nothing to praise God about. How about the bounties of just simply life? Why not? Why not start? First of all, are you thankful for Calvary? Oh, if you're not thankful for Calvary, oh, dear friends, we need to behold Jesus. We need to get in the Word, and we need to if we're not get on our knees and say, God, I'm not thankful for Calvary, but I want to be. I don't know this man 
called Jesus, but I, I want to get to know Him. What a time during this season. Be thankful for what? Oh, for Calvary? Are you thankful for some healings maybe that's taking place in your family and friends? Are you thankful for the clothes that you have on, the shelter, the health, the loving care that we have, mercy, long-suffering, the Bible goes on and on, protection, His power, answer to prayer. All of these things, and we're just scratching the surface, air, sunshine, everything we have to eat. Movement, ability to think, to choose. These are awesome For all of the good gifts that He has provided. Now, if some of you are still shy, some of you still are not sure how I can, I can learn how to be thankful, let's do this. Let's do some cultivating. Here's how to cultivate. You'll say, well, I'm not sure cultivate. Cultivate is simply to develop. It means to improve. It means to refine our thankfulness. So if you're still wondering and you're a little shy and you're a little backward or you haven't learned yet, here's, a good, here's another good key. We need to be educated. He's educated. What, what do you mean educated? Education has to do with what? Good. Teaching. It has to do with learning. It has to do with, with training. It has to do with development. So we need to develop. We need to be teaching. We need to be learning the soul to be cheerful or to be happy and thankful. So we have to educate sometimes because if you haven't been trained that way or you haven't understood it. We need to educate the mind to be what? The soul to be cheerful, to be very thankful. Thankful for what? For the love of Jesus and be grateful to God for the blessings of life. So yes, your attitude can change. Your disposition can change. You can cultivate a change in your heart, in your life, if you are willing. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's just easy to see this. I, I don't know about you. It's easy to see. If there's anyone who can be continually happy, it should be the Christian. If, I'm talking continually. If we should be happy day in and day out. Oh, we're going to have our days, but what? At the base of everything, we're to be happy. And so, if anyone's to be happy in this life, it's to be what? It's to be a, the Christian. It's to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, this is real important. Please pay attention. We just have a few moments left. I want you to think. Maybe put a star by where you're taking notes. And it's very childish, you might say. It's very simple. But listen, I want you to daily pray. Daily pray this. Lord... Teach me to do my best for you. Now, regardless of what you're doing, Lord, teach me to do my best for you. And that just so reminds me, that old song, you know, I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus when He has done so much for me? So I want you to pray this, Lord, teach me. Teach me to do my best for you. And Lord, give me, give me energy and give me cheerfulness. Help me to be happy and help me to be thankful for all the blessings that you give me. And something else, Lord, please bring in love into my heart. Your love into my heart. In everything that I go about to do for you, let there be love. Let there be Jesus that comes through. The simple thing is to pray, Lord, teach me to do my best. I want you to pray that. I want you to pray that day in. I want you to pray that day out. And as we are educating and training and teaching and cultivating our thanksgiving to God, remember this. Oh, this is going to be difficult for some. Very difficult for people who profess to be Christian, love Jesus with all their heart. There's three things here I want you to do. While you're cultivating what? While you're educating, while you're training, I want you to smile, smile, smile. Watch how things will change for you. And if there's some reason, some reason that you are sad, don't let your face 
reveal that fact. Now, that's a challenge, isn't it, for us? Yes, it is. It's a big challenge. Do you realize all the problems that we could smile away as we've cultivated and we're learning to be happy and learning to be cheerful because maybe we haven't been that way before because we didn't know Jesus and now we know Jesus and we got a lot to be thankful for. So quickly as a, maybe as a biblical platform what we should do on Thanksgiving, let me just give you a couple of little hints if you haven't found out yet. Yeah, it's bigger than you and bigger than me and bigger than you know, our family even though that's part of it. Will we, will we just celebrate this day as we, as we always have? Or are we going to give it to God in a special way this time? Is it going to be devoted to, to, to the world or is it going to be devoted to, to God? This is a time for us to, to remember, yes, our family and our friends and, and God's blessings and so on. But it's also remember, the Bible is clear on this, it's a time to remember the poor. Those who don't have what you have. You remember in Matthew chapter 19 where Jesus talks about the rich man? You know, what must I do? What? He said, sell what you have and give. What, what? And give to the poor and the man turned away sorrowfully. Sell what you have and, and give to the poor. But it's interesting today. We live in a world where we want to give to those who can give back to us. This is not found in Scripture. There's no principle in Scripture for this. In fact, the Word of God says in Proverbs 22, 16, listen carefully, He that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. He that giveth to what? To the rich shall surely come to want. Proverbs 10, 22, oh, pay attention, Proverbs 10, 22, the Bible says the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich. What is it? The blessings of the Lord makes us rich. You may not have much in this life, but you can be rich in Jesus Christ. You may not have much, but you can be happy in Him. Thanksgiving needs to be what it implies, what the principle of it, how God looks at it. Thanksgiving simply implies giving thanks. Are you giving thanks to Him today? Are you thankful for all He's done? Think about what you can do for others during this time. Some who've lost their income, lost their job, lost their home. It's a time to give back to them. But you know what? I'm going to encourage you this. Don't forget your dearest friend. Thanksgiving is a time to give God thanks. Give a gift. Take a gift to church with you. Especially mark it out for my best friend Jesus who's done everything for me. This is what it's about in giving thanks back to the one who's given you everything. Why not do that? Try. You haven't tried it? How about trying it this year? Because my Bible says, as I read it, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. Read that in James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift. Have you received that free gift that's come upon all men? Have you received that unspeakable gift? Have you received that gift of grace that Ephesians 3 talks about? And have you tasted of that heavenly gift? Hebrews chapter 6. If not, friends, today is the day. Let's pray about it. Shall we quickly, before we end today, that we'll be able to do as God wants us to do. Let's pray, shall we, together? Merciful Father in heaven, pour out your Spirit, I pray, upon each one of us. Help us to be in a Thanksgiving time, very thankful and grateful to the God above for all that He's done, all that He's doing and will do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope you have a good holiday season. Please, don't forget to support 3ABN and bringing you these gospel messages around the world day by day. And we will look forward to seeing you next time. Welcome back. And I certainly hope and pray that that was a message that you can be thankful for. And look what I've got to be thankful for. My husband's going to join us at the close of today's program. Absolutely. <laughs> what do you have on your mind today? Oh, we have a lot to be thankful for since we're talking about the Thanksgiving season. But we are so thankful for the letters, the emails that we receive. What a blessing. And we just want to share a few. Okay. You know, and by the way, how great. And I brought you some glasses. <laughs> yes, all grandmas need grandmas glasses. Grandmas have to have glasses. And okay. also a few little letters that we can read together. 
But you know, right quickly, I am very thankful for this station that you watch all the time. Mm -hmm. What a blessing it is to bring programs to you and spiritual enlightenment day in and day out, 24-7. Praise God for that. So I'm very thankful for this it's station. It's certainly light in the midst of darkness. Yes. I mean, what an answer to so many prayers. And it's because of you that this station is continuing to move forward with the Three Angels message. It's also because of you that we are here. So all of us need your support and we need your prayers. Amen. Praise the Lord. And these kind of letters, and just very short, these are the things that encourage Absolutely, us to continue yes. on. Not that we need somebody to pat us on the head and no. so on, but we know that people are being reached for Jesus, mm -hmm. that the power of the Holy Spirit is working in hearts and lives. Oh, what an encouragement that is to us. Thank you for sharing. And you know, this is just a, a portion, just a small portion. Oh. These are some of the most recent ones. Yeah. And sometimes people call in and, and, and they're going through heartache. We don't yeah. want to share those things, but we praise God that we are there and maybe able, you know, by God's grace to give a good word in due mm -hmm. season. Amen. You know, I, 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 some statistics that are given it seems like the holiday season is a time that people are excited and mm -hmm. they want to go about doing things and family and friends and so on. But I understand it's the time when the most people become depressed mm. also mm -hmm. because it's a time that they need to be getting together. Maybe they've lost loved ones, they've lost home and family, whatever it might be. So this is a time we really want to be an encouragement Amen. to those who need yes. extra help during this time. Okay, well, let's read this first one. This first came to us by email and it was emailed all the way from Africa. Wow. It says, Dear Founder, and I'm assuming, I, I don't really know why they said that, I'm assuming right. Founder of Behold the Land Ministries. Mm -hmm. Dear Founder, this is a fellowship from Kenya, started here as a Bible study in a home in January of 2010. We preach Jesus, the Savior Amen. who was resurrected and is returning soon. We have reached you through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that an Amen. answer to prayer of its Praise own? The Lord. Yes, it is. Through the Holy Spirit, because yes. we pray, believe oh, it or yes. not, friends, oh. we pray for every por mm. portion of this program. Amen. Every time we, we begin and we end, we thank the Lord. Amen. It says, reading on, we have been blessed by the teaching on your website Praise for the past God. three months. Amen. Amen. The messages therein has increased our faith in the Lord and mm. motivated us to work for Him. We are very thankful in the Lord to be in contact with you. We write today to request you to consider us as fruits of your ministry mm. out of your vision and prayers. We welcome you to visit us here in Africa. Hope to hear from you in love, Ibrahim. Amen. You know, that yes. is... An awesome thought. We were in Africa in 2009. We spent almost a month there. Mm -hmm. We're very, very thankful. Yes. Saw many Amen. people come to the Lord. Amen. But the messages that they're talking about on our website, we have different messages than are what what is aired here on 3ABN. Mm -hmm. These are, are other messages that we allow people to view, you know, record, yes. do whatever they want free of mm -hmm. charge. You can go there, you can listen and watch and prayerfully be blessed. Amen. This next message was also an email, and this is just part of the message. It says, hi, my name's Pauline from, Qu Pauline from Queensland, Australia. Yes. <laughs> I've to start oh, that again. That's good. My name is Pauline from Queensland, Australia. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to tell you that I enjoyed your program very much. It blessed my soul. Mm -hmm. And this wow. was actually one of the first programs I think was aired yes. on Behold the Land Presents the over Lord. three this is, this is what's encouraging, Amen. that it blessed their soul. Nothing to do with us, all to do with what we've been talking about, the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we want it, we know as we preach the truth of God's Word, it is accompanied by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That it will touch lives for Jesus. If what it's, it's all about. not accompanied by God's Spirit. It's, it's just as the, the Bible says, it's a tinkling symbol of yes. sounding brass that mm. just availeth nothing. Every mm. message must be anointed by the Amen. Holy Spirit. Good. This third message was sent in with a donation after ordering our five part series, which I hope you folks remembered, I hope you were able to watch, that we had entitled Addressing the Power of the Holy Spirit. In her note, Dorothy from Tennessee wrote, and it's just short and sweet, but I oh, thought it was good. it was nice. Yeah. Thank you for your quick response. Praise the Lord, she says. Our church 
needs these DVDs. And what she means is our church needs these messages. Yes. We need to know more about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We need to be mm. praying for Amen. that and thankful that God has given us that invitation that we can even do that, Amen. that we can have that, that we can go forward in His power and in His strength. Because I don't know about you, but I sure don't have power and no. I sure don't have strength of my own. No, we have none. So this is the time that we want to give praise and honor, Thanksgiving season, yes, it is. to the God of heaven and be thankful for every one of the viewers mm -hmm. you who are out there. Praise God for you. And we're believing with all of our heart that God's going to do mighty, marvelous things. And so as we're learning in our message, what we need to be doing this time of season yes. is reaching out and touching others mm -hmm. for Jesus. So uh, we th we're thankful for you, thankful for the station, thankful for what you give, what you do. Mm -hmm. We have so much to be yeah. thankful for. If we're standing here breathing, yes. we have food to eat. Oh, yes. Our economy is such a mess right now, but God, mm -hmm. God never left His people yes. without a way of escape, and we praise Him for that, and we're very thankful for that. And mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, Pastor Kenny? Yes. <laughs> I think we should kneel, and I think we should have a closing okay. prayer for these people. What do you think? Oh, special for them, special for you out there who are, some will be listening, some's going to be watching, and mm -hmm. it may be delayed, whatever, but the power of the Holy Spirit can reach your heart right now, yes. and the words that's spoken Amen. can bring joy and encouragement during this time of the year. Let's just kneel, Mom, shall we, right okay. now, and let's pray together. Yes. Merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for your love that you have for us. You've said in your word it's an everlasting love. You love us with that love that's without end. You love us in a way that we find very difficult in this life to even comprehend. Amen. But we thank you, and by looking to Calvary, it helps us to understand how much you do love us. We're praying especially now for those who are viewing, those who are mm -hmm. in need, those who are maybe a little despondent because of the, the season when people are looking around and, and maybe family's not there. Maybe they've, oh, so many have lost mm. their homes and they've been so discouraged and I just lift them up to you Amen. right now by faith to the very throne room of God that you will reach out yes. and touch these individuals. Comfort. Help them. Yes, the comforting the power of the Holy Spirit that they can reach out and maybe even in their midst of, 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 of uh, problems and tests and trials mm. that they may reach out to help someone else along the yes, way and in turn yeah. it will help them. Lord, meet their needs, I pray, in every form, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. As we give you praise and honor and glory, continue to bless, lead, guide, and direct. May this be the first day of our life with Jesus. Amen. I thank you for hearing and answering prayer. This short time to be able to spend together to lift up our voices and your voices wherever you are at in praise to our Creator, our Redeemer, our Sustainer, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, thank you, Jesus, and thank you for watching. Thank you for spending time with us today. We want to hear from you. Won't you write us? You can write us at Behold the Lamb Ministries. That's P.O. Box 2030, Heron, Illinois, 62948. Or call us here in America at Central Standard Time at 618-942-5044. You can email us at BeholdTheLambMinistries at Yahoo.com or visit us on the web at BeholdTheLambMinistries.com. Until next time, may our precious Lord continue to richly bless you and yours.